Another big question that comes up, I think a lot of agents uh, will say, well, Matt, I prospect, but I always just feel like I'm spinning my wheels and I'll call people. They never answer. I can't get anything from my lead follow-up. And in my experience, it's because they're forcing uh, prospects into their database that aren't real leads. In other words, my belief is this. My belief is that a lead can only be a lead because we've asked for an appointment that we didn't set yet. And therefore, they become a lead because our lead follow-up is all based on setting the appointment. What is your, how do you uh, generate, or how do you decide rather, yeah, this is a lead, this is someone I'm gonna put into my database and I'm gonna continue to follow up with so that you don't end up just forcing data. You're not just collecting leads that are never gonna pay you. Yeah, and that's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, when I first started my career, I was putting everybody in there, man. That's right. And then I would look and be like, oh my God, I got like 50 leads I have to call today. Yeah. And that would take away from time from prospecting and finding people that really want to sell. So I think for me, they have to demonstrate some motivation, right? I mean, that's, that's right. what it's all about. You know, what's important to you about selling? Simple question, yeah. right? What's important to you that's about right. selling? Well, I got to move here, job transfer, divorce situation. Um, I do get a lot of vagueness and I don't follow up with them. I'll keep them in the in the pipeline. So maybe I'll hit them three days later and have another kind of initial conversation to see if they've loosened up a little bit and they want to share anything with me. But I won't purposely put them into a follow-up system and be like, oh, I'm going to call this guy 20 times to try to set an appointment. So for me, it's like, you know, there has to be some kind of reason and they have to be willing to share that with you. And, and you know, not all of them are in the initial call. And I've also had initial calls where they won't share anything with me, maybe hang up after a question or two. And then you call them four days later and all of a sudden they've opened up. Sure. How they want to tell you all the things. So, to, I mean, to answer your question, I think that they have to demonstrate, you know, some level of, of motivation. That's, that's yeah. the key. And then once you've identified that, how do you set up the call from a skills perspective um, that you and the prospect are on the same page so that future conversations are productive where we um that they lead to an appointment right so are there expectations you set with the prospect how often are you following up what is it that you say at the end of a call that you say okay yeah this is a hot lead this is worth my time i know we talked about motivation but for us as an example we we give the prospect uh many many chances to tell us no we we invite them to tell us to kick rocks right. it's only the prospects that don't push back that we're fully in alignment that we are going to have a future conversation or the ones we're ever going to follow up with. Otherwise we can't help everybody. What's you, what, how yeah. do you do it? And I think, I think it comes down to trying to set the appointment on every call you make. Yep. I think a lot of people, they just follow up. Hey, how you doing? Just checking in. That's on exactly you. right. Hey, Brandon, how are you? It's Matt here for you. If you need me, buddy. Yeah. That's, nope. that's not really going to go anywhere. So for me, if they, if they, I'll try to set the appointment. So when I follow up, hey, Brandon, it's Matt. We had a great conversation last week. You told me to give you a call back this week. I know you're still looking to move to Utah. Do you have some time available tonight at five or would six be better? Just go right, right for the appointment, and, right? And then, yeah, go right for the appointment, right? And then if they kick back and say, well, Matt, I'm not ready right now. Okay, Brandon, so when, when do you want me to call you back? Uh, call me next Thursday. Okay, so Brandon, when I call you next Thursday, are we going to be setting an appointment or confirming an appointment? Mm. Love it. Uh, well, you know, we're going to be uh, setting an appointment. Okay, well, let's just set it right now because my calendar is busy, as I'm sure yours is. So I got next Thursday at six o'clock or would seven be better, Brandon? Yeah. So I'm awesome. putting you on the spot there. Now, if you kick back and say, no, 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 I don't want to set an appointment right now, then I might say something like, Brandon, you know, look, it, I, my job is not to convince you to sell. My job is to help you sell. So, I mean, it, some people, they, you know, they kind of feel afraid to tell me like, hey, I don't want to sell and then, you know, kind of lead me on and, 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 and keep telling me to call back every other week. And, and at the end of the day, I don't want to bark up the wrong tree and I don't want to be a nuisance to you. I'm really trying to be of service to you. So is that the case here? Are you just like saying, hey, Matt, I don't want to sell in, in, in an inadvertent way? <laughs> you know, Love a lot it. of times they'll say, uh, yeah, man, I just, you know, we're not, we're not going to sell at this point. Okay, great. Now I don't have to follow up with that person, you know, but uh beautiful. And you're looking for the prospect to say, no, 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 Matt. No, that's not the case. We absolutely want to sell. Yeah. You know, I just been kind of crazy busy. And then boom, you get to the truth. You get to the truth. And that's yeah. what we want. We want the truth because you have to have the courage to do exactly what you want. I call it, you know, confronting with compassion. We're just confronting them and saying, listen, it's okay if you're not interested. It's okay. Yeah. You could tell me. We're yeah. we're the amateurs so scared to hear no that they hide behind it. So they just get a bunch of bullshit answers all the time and they chase prospects that are never going to do any business with them.
Yeah. And my old coach told me this and it kind of changed the way I followed up. He said, you know, an appointment's always better than a future follow-up. Yeah. Said, so, so if they tell me to call back in a month, I should set an appointment for a month out. Absolutely. Set the appointment, send the calendar invite. So they put it on. That's their right. Calendar. Because so when you call them back, you say, Hey, just confirming our appointment for tomorrow at three o'clock, always set the appointment. It's it, there's just much more commitment to an appointment versus, oh, just call me in a month, call me in two months. Okay, happy to call you in two months. Well, we'll be setting an appointment or confirming an appointment in two months. That's yeah. a great question, you know, and they'll let them tell you and then set it. Love it. Now, I love nine it. Nine times right. out of 10, they probably won't honor that appointment, but. At least you're tentatively getting something on the calendar yeah. so yeah. that we can follow up with a purpose because it's to your point, we're asking them, hey, listen, let's get this on the calendar. When would it make sense for us to talk again? You tell me, I'm only calling you back because you told me to call you back. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. They're telling you to call call you back. That's right. It's like you, you know, I'm just doing what you told me to do. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. So shifting to the appointment, you know, there's a lot of things that we go through. Matt, you and I had a listing appointment that might be 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe it's an hour. What are maybe one or two things that you find at the listing appointment that has really helped you to win business? Well, I think that um a lot of it is the energy that you bring, both on the phone and in person. And I've noticed that more so over the last couple, that last year than anything else, right? Like when you come with the energy, you're alive, you're excited, you're full of energy, right? Affirmation. So a lot of people, they walk in, man, with just like their shoulders hung. Hey, how you doing, John? You know, take a look at the yeah. house. And like, dude, you got to come in there and be like, I'm so excited to be here. Can't wait to see this house and help you guys get the property sold. And just like your energy, your tonality, uh, they buy into that stuff, man. They they when you're when you're vibrant, when you're vibrating at that level, people they feel it, right? And I think it's it's more of that than anything else than what you say. You know, your body language, your hundred percent confidence. They want to know, like, hey, can this guy? Do I feel like this guy can sell my house? And do you believe you can sell that house? You know, because that's a lot of it right there. In, they don't believe they can sell the house, or they don't believe they're the best agent for the job. So when they walk in the door, they already come with that lower kind of vibration and the seller kind of feels it, right? So if I walk in after you were kind of just like, oh, yeah, and I walk in like alive, excited, I'm ready to go, they're going to be like, dude, this guy's bringing the heat, you know, let me let me hire him. So I think it's less about what you say versus how you come across. Um, but I think, you know, I have a good track record. Not everybody that's listening to this is going to have a good track record, but maybe they have a good company track record. Mm. So I, I tend to use that. Um, I've been known to, you know, like last night I was at a listing appointment. I got the listing. They said, you know, we're interviewing two, eight, two more agents. I said, well, let me ask you a question. If you knew that those agents were selling just a fraction of what I was selling, would you still want to interview them or would you hire me? He says, well, I mean, if we knew they weren't selling any homes, we wouldn't even want to waste the time. I go, great, let's look them up. And I can mm. tell you from, from my production level, which, you know, I'm not selling 100 homes a year. I'll probably sell 35 homes this year. But most agents we know, 47% last year didn't even sell a deal. That's right. 83% sold less than four homes. Yep. So there's a 90% chance I'm going to bring them up on the MLS and be like, look, did, you know, this guy didn't sell any houses, you know, or this guy only sold three homes. Like, you know, who do you want to work with? And a 100%. lot of times that will, you know, close the door right there and they won't interview the other two agents. Um, yeah, well, let I'll, me jump in. Let, let me jump in real quick. Yeah. That right there plays off the first thing you said, which we're just selling confidence because you nailed it. I've talked to agents that say they've told me verbally, man, I don't even know if I'm, uh, they, they'd probably be better off hiring somebody else. Like I, I'm not confident in my abilities to get yeah. this thing sold. And it's like, well, of course you're not winning business. You're selling confidence. And yeah. the whole fact of like what you're just talking about, some agents right now are like, holy shit, you pull up the MLS and Look up the other agents. Well, yes, because I'm confident in my abilities to serve this person at the highest level. Why would I why would I walk away from something I'm so certain about? That's the right. anti-confidence, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, 100 percent And I think that um, you know, I used to when I first got in the business, I'm like, what do I have to present? You know, right. all these company stats and you know, look at what our brokerage did and, and look at how we're going to promote you to a hundred different websites. Nobody cares about that junk, man. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Um, a lot of times I'll walk into my appointments and say, guys, besides price, is there anything else you want to talk about? I get right down yeah. to the point, man. Besides price, is there anything else you want to talk about? You know, what are you looking for in the agent that you hire? And just present to that. 
Like, what are they looking for? Don't start going off on tangents and talking about stuff that they don't care about. You know, look at our company does for for this organization. Look what our company, you know, is is blah, 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 blah. Yeah, dude, it's it's just it gets, you know, they don't want to hear that. They just and their attention span nowadays, you know, is like it's very short. So you just have to hit the points, you know, come to price. And I think, you know, pricing has a lot to do with winning. Um you know, so I try to solve these objections before I even, you know, some realtors, Brandon, are going to tell you what you want to hear. Why do you think they would do that? You know, and then mm. they say, well, I don't know. Well, they want to get your listing. They want to bring it down. I, I got a listing yesterday, 1.1 million. Well, another realtor came in and said 1.3. And I said, okay, did they show you anything that substantiates that price? Anything in your neighborhood? Well, no, I mean, we didn't see anything, but they said the neighborhood down the street, you know, there's a home that sold for that price. And I said, uh, well, why do you think they would tell you 1.3 if it wasn't possible? Mm. See, I'm willing to tell you the truth and be willing to lose the listing, but at least I know I was honest. I can walk away with my integrity, right? And then Love maybe it. we'll get together in six months from now. But uh, if that agent isn't willing to do that, then you know you have to you have to kind of figure it out for yourself. But, and there are sometimes I've lost deals because I've been very truthful. And I think in this market, you have to be very truthful. That's right. If you overprice a home; it's just going to sit. Yeah, it's just going to sit, and you're not going to sell it. And you're not going to sell it, right? Yeah. Those are great two points. Great two points. I mean, that to me has been the biggest thing too, is gaining permission from the seller to be honest, to shoot them straight, to not BS them. And then to plant seeds that other agents, that's all they do is BS. That's all they do is make things seem better than they really are in hopes to do what, right? And then they get the seller to say, wow, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, that's what I did was I said, look, why don't we, why don't we figure out how many homes that agent sold? So I did the same thing we just talked about. I brought the agent up and sure enough, how many homes did they sell in the last 12 months? Three, two, yeah, yep, of course. So is this course. somebody you want representing your interest? No, 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 no. And then we signed. So yeah, you just got to be honest, man. There's too many agents out there that just, they're dying so much to get a listing. They feel like they're achieving something and they overprice the heck out of it. And then it's just like, who wants to deal with that? It's already tough enough to deal with a seller. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're right. at a high level, there's, you're going to have sellers that are very emotional you know, people that are hard to deal with, but, you know, overprice 10 listings and see how hard your life's going to be. Great point. It's a great <laughs> you know, point. You're going to be, you're going to be hearing it. Yeah. So how do you set expectations with your clients that allows you to have a great schedule working Monday through Thursday and able to take weekends off with your friends and family? So, you know, and this is something I learned after about probably four or five years in the business, you know, the first four years, I never told them anything. Right. I would just say, okay, great. And then they'd be like hunting me down and be like, dude, when are the pictures coming? Hey, what's this? What does this process look like? And hey, how come you didn't call me? We just had a showing. Yeah. If you do not set expectations before you leave, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. I mean, even That's if right. you do a great job, they're going to feel like you did a bad job because they have a certain expectation of what they want it to be like. Yeah. So I just go through it step by step. I'm like, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to leave. My assistant's going to reach out. We're going to schedule photos. We're going to put a box on the door. Key's going to go in there. We're going to notify you on showings. Now, you are going to get showings during the week. Brandon, I'm not going to call you after every showing. Sometimes it takes three or four days to get a hold of these agents. You know, they're busy. They've got stuff going on. Uh, the uh, client needs to decompress and figure things out. So every Monday, I'm going to call you with a detailed report of what happened, how many views we had, you know, what the client said. Now, of course, if we get an offer... I'm going to call you before that. I'm not going to sit on an offer that we got on Tuesday till the following Monday. I'm going to call you immediately with any offers. And so that just sets it up where, you know, they already understand how it's going to work. And I tell them like, look, in the morning, if you call me between 7.30 and 11, I'm not answering the phone. Yeah. Love it. I will call you at 11 o'clock. Now I do kind of check out 6, 6.30. If it's an emergency call me. I'll get right back to you. If it's a true emergency, if it can wait till the next day, just call me, text me. I'll call you back the next day. Weekends, if it's an emergency, call me. Look, I know I'm a realtor. I know I'm 24 seven, but I do like to spend a little time with my family if that's okay. You know, and they kind of laugh, you know, and and they're like, no, no, don't worry. We're not going to bother you, man. You're good. You're good. And then, you know, again, it's just setting that up. And then if they come back to you and say, hey, how come you didn't call me? Say, hey, remember? We talked about X, Y, and Z. And remember, I'm going to call you on Monday. So that's the way you set it up, man. And I didn't do that. Like I said, for the first four years, and I'd have sellers that I like got them full price offers and they weren't happy. Like, yeah. oh, I'm 
you didn't do this, you didn't do that. And I'm like, wouldn't give me a good review. And I'm like, what the hell, man? And in my mind, I did such a good job. And in their mind, they just had certain expectations that weren't fulfilled. Love it. I, it the, what I wrote down was setting boundaries equals respect. So when yeah. no boundaries are set, to your point, you could be, you could do everything right and they're still pissed off. They right? don't know any better. Yeah. They don't know any they, better. They don't sell houses on the level we do. No. And so they're constantly blowing you up on the weekend. Hey, what's going on with my house? What's going on with my listing? So we've got to set expectations. I've always said, if you're going to be a great listing agent, you have to be great at setting expectations and great at setting boundaries with your clients. That actually increases what we call equal business stature. You actually right. get more respect from the client that way, not less. Yeah. And so, if you're going to sell at a high level, I mean, if you're going to sell three homes a year, right? that big of a deal, is it? But if you're going to sell 30, 40, 50 homes, yeah, you got to set the boundaries.